Welcome to the Revelation Code. I'm your host, Suzanne, and I want you to stay with us over the next 30 minutes for an in-depth look into the world of prophecy and how it affects your life today. Whether you believe in prophecy or not, the prophetic words in the Bible are coming true daily. Wars and rumors of wars, nations rising up, and the rise of famine and sickness all point to the end of time the Bible talks about. How close are we to the end of days? And what will happen in our lifetime? Stay tuned, you're about to find out. Today on the Revelation Code. He said, I'm going to make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. It's like having a cup of coffee and, it's, and your hand's shaking. And you can't drink it but because your hand is trembling. I'm going to make that cup a trembling cup. He said, I'm going to make it a burdensome stone. I'm going to make Jerusalem, I'm going to make Israel in the latter days a weight upon the world. Now you think about it saying this little nation the size of the state of New Jersey is on the lips of the world. In Jesus name. Amen. Jerusalem a cup of trembling. This this title may sound a little a little funny to some but it, it is actually scripture. And we're going to see tonight I want to start here uh, in the book of Zechariah chapter 12 verses 2 and 3. The prophet wrote under the unction of the Holy Spirit he wrote, Behold, God says, Behold, I make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about, when they shall be in siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. He said, And in that day, in that day is a latter day term, in that day, I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, all that burden themselves with it, those that burden themselves with this stone. He said, shall be cut in pieces, and though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. This is an amazing prophecy in the book of Zechariah. And I really believe, saints, that tonight we're going to see that this prophecy has begun. I really believe that. Uh, I believe that, uh, that we've entered this end time season. How many would agree? Uh, I'm asking you two questions. How many would agree we're in the end times tonight? See your hands. All right. How many would agree that uh, the Middle East is unstable? Okay. Well, we're going to see tonight that the Middle East, it, it is unstable. There's no peace in the region. But tonight we're going to see that it is by God's design. We're going to see that Father God is up to something. It's like God is moving major chess pieces on his prophetic chessboard. He's lining things, uh, uh, lining things up uh, tonight for the end times. And again, Jerusalem, Israel, we're going to see is a major player uh, in that time. He said, I'm going to make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. It's like having a cup of coffee and, is, and your hand's shaking. And you can't drink it but because your hand is trembling. I'm going to make that cup a trembling cup. He said, I'm going to make it a burdensome stone. I'm going to make Jerusalem, I'm going to make Israel in the latter days a weight upon the world. Now you think about it, saying this little nation the size of the state of New Jersey is on the lips of the world. But it's by God's design, and we're going to see it tonight. Now, I'm going to give you a, a number of topics. Some of these we're going to hit pretty fast, but I'm going to give you a number of topics. I want to first start off, I want to show you God's love for Jerusalem. This is one city out of all cities in the world that Father God has a love affair with. Then I'm going to give you a brief history of Jerusalem, just a little small brief history of the city of Jerusalem. Then we're going to look at the myth of a Palestinian statehood. Now, this is not a Palestinian bashing message, nor no, an Arab bashing message, but we're gonna get the, uh, get, get, get the facts correct. And we're gonna see the myth of a Palestinian statehood. Then we're gonna look at the burden of Jerusalem. And here, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show you the heart of the world regarding Israel. God said, I'm gonna make Jerusalem a burden to the world. Uh, the world's gonna hate Jerusalem. It's gonna hate Israel in the latter days and we're going to see saints it's by God's design the sovereign God has allowed these things to take place then we're going to look at the peacemakers 
And the peacemakers, we're going to see tonight, these are those that are trying to grab that burden, trying to grab the stone. We'll see tonight that these are those that are trying to stabilize the cup. They're trying to stop the cup from shaking. They're trying to make the, the Middle East a, a peaceful place. Then we're going to look at what must we do as the church. And then last, we're going to look at the future of Jerusalem. Now, I know I got a lot of subjects here, but we're going to cover them really fast. And we're going to see some amazing things. So first, we're going to start off with God's love for Jerusalem. And the saints, again, this is amazing to me. Out of all the cities in the world, this is one city that Father God loved. We'll give you a verse here in the, in the book of Psalms, 132, verse number 13 and 14. He said, for the Lord have chosen Zion. He have desired it for his habitation. God says, this is my rest forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. God says, I want, my, uh, I want Jerusalem to be my habitation. He said, I have desired it. Now, originally, saints, I'm from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And nowhere in the scripture do I see God saying he loved Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now, I know he loves it because he created the whole world. But listen, saints, all through the scripture, Jerusalem is on the heart of God. Look at this next verse. Zechariah chapter 2, I mean chapter 3, verse number 2. The prophet wrote, he says, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, even the Lord that have chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is not this the brand plucked out of the fire? The scripture says here, God have chosen Jerusalem. And listen, saying we got to be very careful uh, in these latter days, you know, how we treat that little city. We're going to see tonight that it is dangerous uh, to treat it uh, 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 in error. Now, look at this. This is, this is the welling wall. If you go into, the, go into Israel, you see this welling wall. Uh, I went to Israel, and I was so amazed about the welling wall because uh, at the welling wall, they really wail. They cry at the welling wall. I was there, and a number of Israeli soldiers came there, and they leaned up to the wall, and they began to cry. And I looked at them, and it was so amazing to me as I watched these men cry. And I said, what is it about this wailing wall? Well, the Lord gave me a scripture. I really think that it is amazing uh, prophecy. It's found in the book of Isaiah chapter 62. And I, again, since I think it's prophetic of what has happened there. Look what he says here. Isaiah 62, verse number one. He said, for Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake will I not rest until righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Verse 6, God says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye shall make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. Those that make mention, keep not silent. Verse 7, he says, and I will give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So I really believe that God has allowed the wailing wall to be there uh, as, as the Jews cry out for intercession. They're interceding uh, for Jerusalem to become a praise in the earth. It's going to happen because we're going to see tonight that Jerusalem is on the heart of God. We're going to see that Jerusalem has a past, a present, and a future with God. It is amazing what we are witnessing before our very eyes. This little nation is on the lips of the world. Give you another verse in the New Testament, our Savior talking. I love this. Jesus, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 33, he says, Again, ye have heard it said, uh, heard, heard that it had been said uh, by them of old time, that thou shalt forswear thy, that thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Jesus said, But I say unto you, swear not at all neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. He said, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool. But then he threw something else in. He said, and neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Jesus said, don't even swear by Jerusalem, because it is the city of the great king. This little city is on the heart of God. It has God's heartbeat. And again, we're going to see that the world wants it. Uh, God has declared it as his own, his habitation. But again, what we are witnessing today, saints, is amazing because, again, uh, it's by divine providence of God. Now, I want to give you a little brief history 
of Jerusalem. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you brief history of Gentile control over the region. And again, because of what has happened, you know, God allowed uh, Gentile control over the city. But I'm going to show you something uh, that's so amazing. Just a little brief history about it. To do this, I'm going to quote a colleague of mine, Dr., uh, Dr. Dave Reagan, from his book, God's Plan for the Ages. Listen to what he says in regarding to G uh, Gentile Jerusalem. He said, after 70 years of captivity in Babylon, the Jews returned to Jerusalem and rebuilt the temple and their city. But they refused to recognize their Messiah. So they were given a second group of prophecies relating to a period of time when Jerusalem would fall under Gentile control. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, 21 verse 6, Jesus says, as for, those, as for these things which ye beho uh, behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be cast down. Jesus prophesied the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. But look, he goes on to say, Later, in a second discourse, Jesus uh, stated that the city would be surrounded by armies, which would proceed to desolate it. Luke 21, verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with, uh, with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. These prophecies were fulfilled 40 years later. The, uh, when the Roman, uh, Roman general, Titus, when the Romans under Titus completely destroyed the city, including the temple. Jesus made another prophecy about the city in the same speech. He said in Luke 21, 24, he says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until... You know, this word until is a very powerful word because this, this lets us know that, that Jerusalem will be trampled by uh, 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 control, by Gentile control until. I mean, there's coming a time that there's going to be a switch. There's going to be a change uh, in leadership. He says, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The Romans fulfilled this prophecy and they were, fo uh, they were followed by the Byzantines. They were succeeded in order by the Muslims. Then the Crusaders, the Mamelukes, the Turks, the British, and the Jordanians. Just as Jesus prophesied, the city suffered on the long period of Gentile control until June 7, 1967, when for the first time in 1897 years, the Jews regained sovereignty over the city, Jerusalem. It was on that day that Rabbi Shimon Gorin went to the Western Wall and cried out, I proclaim to you the beginning of the Messianic age. Let me tell you something, saints. We are witnessing some amazing uh, fulfillment of Bible prophecy. God has brought Israel back into world history. Father God is repopulating that land for a future visitation. Uh, we do know based on scripture that during the time of the great tribulation, Israel would go through a, a season of tests like none other. And the end result of that great tribulation season, national Israel will come to salvation in Jesus Christ. But again, it says what is happening is a precursor uh, 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 to those events. God says in the latter days, I'm going to make it a cup of trembling. He said, those that try to stabilize it, I'm going to cut them in pieces. Those that grab this burden, Jerusalem, I'm going to cut you in pieces. In other words, you can't stabilize it. You can't carry the weight of Jerusalem. You can't bring peace to the region. And we're going to see some amazing things. Now, I love this verse here in Ezekiel chapter 5, verse number 5. Look what it says. It says, thus said the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. God says, I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about. Now this picture you see here, it's a famous world map talking about Jerusalem being the center of the world. Some scholars call Jerusalem uh, the navel of the world. It's, 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 the, it's the belly button of the world. Everything's gonna center from this one city. Uh, and again, we're witnessing uh, some amazing things that are coming to pass before us. Now let's go a little further and let's look at the myth of a Palestinian state here. Now again, saints, the reason why I'm giving this is because again, there's a lot of false teaching out there. You gotta be very, very careful what you see on the news, what you hear on the news when it comes to this, to, to this Palestinian issue. Uh, uh, Jesus died to, to save everyone, Palestinian. He died to save Jew, Gentile, he died to save everyone. But we need to get something straight here tonight. 
there's a, a myth of a Palestinian statehood. And let me, let, me, let me share this with you. Regarding the Palestinians, during the nearly 1900 years that the Jews were in exile from the land, there was never a Palestinian state declared in its place. Now I'm going to explain that in a few minutes. Now I know you may have seen old maps that call Jerusalem Palestine, but you got to understand, I'm going to tell you how that came about, but there was never a Palestinian state declared in its place. Jerusalem was never the capital of any Arab state. You won't find it in history. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, they are trying to create history now that's false history. They're trying to make history to fit it, but, but there's false history. Uh, Israel has, has history go, go way back. They're trying to create false history. Listen, there was, there was no Palestinian identity, culture, or language. Indeed, there is no such thing as a Palestinian people or a Palestinian culture or a Palestinian language or Palestinian history. There has never been a Palestinian state, neither any Palestinian uh, archae uh, uh, archaeological finds nor coinage. The present day Palestinians are an Arab people with an Arab culture, an Arabic language, and an Arab history. They have their own Arab state from which they came into the land of Israel about one century ago to contrast the Jewish immigration. The, uh, that is the historical uh, truth. Now I'm going to share with you in a few minutes how uh, uh, Israel became to be called Palestine. Uh, at the time when, when, uh, when Israel was called Palestine, there was Jews and Arabs in the land, and everybody at that time were called Palestinian. There were, th there were Jewish Palestinians, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's just like here in Louisville. Uh, what, what are you calling Louisville? Louisville, what, 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 what do you guys call? <laughs> Say it again. Louisvillians. All right. Because, because of the region where you live, you identify with that region. But I want to share something with you nice things. There was never a Palestinian state declared in Israel's absence. As a matter of fact, when God scattered the Jew, the land became cursed, the Bible said. God said the land would not produce for no one. Uh, the world would be amazed at the desolation of Israel when Israel, when the Jews were not in the land. God said in the latter days, when he bring them back to the land, that he would cause the land to produce for them. He said, I'm going to cause the land to grow. You know, Israel is the third largest citrus producing nation in the world. Little old Israel. God had brought her back in the world history. And now the land is producing for her. Well, this is an amazing quote by one of the prime ministers of Israel. This is Prime Minister Golda Meir. Listen to what she said about, about the term Palestine. She said, there is no such thing as a Palestinian Arab nation. Palestine is a name the Romans gave to Israel with the express purpose of infuriating the Jews. Why should we use that spiteful name meant to humiliate us? You know, the Romans changed the name to humiliate Israel. Uh, I, I, I challenge pastors when they, you know, when they talk Israel, I, I hear pastors all the time, they call it Palestine. I say, listen, uh, no, the Bible calls it Israel. This land is called Israel. Uh, this, this was Jacob's land. Uh, Jacob had 12 sons. This, it's called the promised land. It was land that was promised to him. Here she said that this, it, it, was, it was created to, uh, to infuriate the Jews. Now again, we're going to see the nice things that all of what we're witnessing here is playing into the unstableness of the region. You got to hear me, saints. The unstableness is by God's design. And we're going to see tonight that no man, uh, no president can stabilize the cup. Now, let's look at the burden of Jerusalem. We're going to see the hatred of Israel. We're going to see how much, how much Israel is hated. Jerusalem has become a major burden to the world. And it is that burden that has caused the world to hate Israel and its Jewish, uh, uh, its Jewish heritage with a passion. The Jews are hated because of their rich history belonging to the land of Israel. And God said that he would bring Israel back into world history in the last days. This would result in a major latter-day sign of the world turning against Israel. Now, I say this again. I'm going to share some things which are going to blow your mind. Uh, there's a supernatural hatred for Israel and Jerusalem. There's a supernatural hatred 
for the Jew. And again, we're going to see it's by God's design. God is up to something. Father God is allowing it. Uh, he said to Zechariah, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling. It's by God's design. Father God is up to something. And I'm going to show you what he's up to tonight. Just to show you, again, some of the hatred. Uh, in 2012, Ahmoud Adinejad, the crazy man uh, of Iran, uh, <clears throat> he's no longer president now. Uh, Rahani replaced him. But uh, while he was in office, this man, this man hated Israel. Uh, in a speech uh, on August 2nd, he says, he says, in a speech to his Islamic uh, country ambassadors, the Iranian president says, liberation of Palestine will solve all of the world's problems. This is saying, this is what the world thinks. Everybody thinks if we could just stabilize Israel, if we get the Jews and the Arabs to, 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 to get along, we'll have a peaceful world. No, we won't. We're going to see. It'll never happen uh, without, without God's intervention. Look at this. On August 19, 2012, he said, we will destroy, destroy Israel soon, the Iranian president uh, said. On Friday... Publicly, he publicly declared that, that the primary foreign policy goal of his government is to see the Jewish state erased from the map of the Middle East. His purpose was to see it erased. Now, uh, this guy really should have taken some example from some of the recent history. Uh, Saddam Hussein, he, he declared that he was going to push Israel into the, uh, 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 into the Mediterranean Sea. But tonight his bones are bleaching in the Iraqi desert. Let me tell you something, you can't come against God and think you're going to be a success. It don't work. You, it does not work. Now, people think because, uh, because Ahmed Adinejad is not, no longer in power, that there is now a, a change of, of view in Iran. Uh, no, we're going to see that, there, that there's no change. It's the same policy business as usual. But again, this is an amazing prophecy in Psalm 83 that I think fits right into uh, what uh, Ahmed Adinejad just said. This is uh, Psalms 83, verse number four. It says, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. This little land, they want to they just cut it off. They want to take it out of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of Iran. Uh, they asked him a question. Uh, what would be your stance on the Palestinian... Israeli conflict they said how do you uh, you view the Arab Israeli peace initiative he said this Rahani said since the inception of the Islamic Republic the Palestinian issue has been high on the agenda of our foreign policy the sensitivity and importance of this issue will not be undermined by any change of government in Iran Iran will continue to support the Palestinian cause wholeheartedly in my view, the only lasting solution to the Palestinian crisis is the realization of national aspirations and full, listen at this, full restoration of the rights of the Palestinian people. Any uh, initiative which, which falls short of this fundamental criteria cannot succeed and will therefore not uh, receive our support. Even though there's change of leadership in Iran, it's still business as usual. They hate Israel. They hate the Jew. And again, saints, we're going to see tonight. It's by God's design. Look at this. This is uh, Mahmoud Abbas. He is the uh, PLO prime minister, uh, uh, authority leader. Listen to what he said. He said, he's telling the world, he said, don't order us to accept a Jewish state. We cannot accept it. How do you make peace with a, with a group that won't, that won't sit down and talk with you honestly? How do you make peace with a group that will never, never declare your statehood? These are the people that we want them to make peace with. Look at this one. This happened uh, a, a year or so ago. Uh, the, the president of, of, uh, of Syria, 
what, what happened, you know, uh, as we had all of these, uh, these up, uh, uprisings in Egypt and then uh, Libyan president uh, 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 Gaddafi was killed and, you know, had all of these Arab Springs. Uh, as these things were going around the Arab world, this man got concerned because there, there was a stir even in Syria uh, to overthrow him. So look what he said. He said, President Assad said this. He says, if, if NATO or Turkey dare to interfere in Syria's affair, look what he said he's going to do. He said, it would only take six hours for Syria to devastate Tel Aviv, Israel and ignite the Middle East. Now, what in the world does Israel have to do with what NATO and, and other nations do to, to bring about an Arab Spring? He said, what I'm going to do, if they come in on me, I'm going to send, I'm going to lob missiles into Israel, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to stir up the Middle East. Well, the little nation of Israel got wind of that, and uh, they gave him an answer. I tried to find the biggest tank I could find. <laughs> Here's the Israeli response to Syria. They said, if a single missile explodes in Tel Aviv, listen to this, they said, Damascus will be the first to pay the price. And if the missile offensive persists, one Syrian city after another will be destroyed. Now, when this news came out, many people thought that Isaiah 7, 17 was about to come to pass because there's a prophecy on the destruction of Damascus. It's there in the morning, but by evening, it will be totally wiped out. And many scouts thought, okay, man, this may be, it's about to happen. You know, with everything that's going on right now with ISIS and all the things, let me tell you something, tell you something saying, we're living in some amazing times. The Middle East is so volatile. I mean, it's like, it's like uh, gunpowder. It's in the air, and one spark will ignite it. But we're going to see. It's by God's design. Look at this. The White House got involved in this condemnation. Oh, the White House. July 30, 2012, the United States, Department, United States Department in a press conference would not acknowledge Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. An official State Department communication has labeled Jerusalem, listen at this, and Israel as separate entities. In an official press release yesterday, keeping up with its long-standing policy, the State Department refuses to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's official capital, despite a U.S. law stating otherwise. Otherwise, we have laws on the books stating that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. But our current administration will not acknowledge it. It goes on to say, President Obama faced criticism on the issue last year when it was revealed that the White House has scrubbed all references to Jerusalem from being part of the Jewish state from a collection of photos on its website. Let me tell you something, this hatred, this burden. You know, you figure, man, Israel is a burden. You know, we, if we just get Israel and the Jews, I mean, the, the, the Arabs and the Jews to get along, and if we can stabilize the region, the whole world would be at peace. Receive today's sermon on DVD or CD or become a monthly partner and receive each sermon this season on CD, DVD, plus find out more on our Facebook page and stay up to date with what's happening in Prophecy. Join me next week as we look further into unlocking the Revelation Code.